Let's deal with Trump for just a second. Um, today he invoked Mother Teresa, <laughs> saying Mother Teresa couldn't even beat this. He's so delusional. Yeah, he, you know, there could be nothing more devastating for him than a lack of control or a lack of power, and he has none here. And you're seeing him, you know, now it's kind of game time. And you're seeing, you know, he, was, he had all the bluster in court and sitting there with his eyes closed and whatnot. And now it's game time. And it could go really bad for him. And I, I think you're seeing him unravel. I, I want this over because I want him back out because I want to see him every day doing what he does. Because regardless, guilty or not, he needs to be out there so he can unfold in front of us. Unfold is an interesting word. Um... Take me inside your, your sort of best understanding of what's happening right now. It might matter so much to both sides. The jury's asked for these four specific pieces of witness testimony. We've been going through them. We'll continue to do so. What's, what's happening between the two legal teams? Well, they are going through the transcript and each of them trying to figure out exactly what lines of the transcript uh, are responsive to these requests. That's what I was just doing for the last hour as well. And I have to say, in looking at them, I, I mean, it's hard to read the tea leaves, but it seems like the jury is doing what they should be doing, which is going back to David Pecker, right? Mm -hmm. Because the they have been instructed, you can't rely on, you know, just Michael Cohen. You need corroboration for that witness. That was part of their instruction. So they're going back and looking at, well, what did David Pecker say about that Trump Tower meeting? And what about that call that David Pecker had with Donald Trump alone about Karen McDougal? What exactly was said? And in particular, them asking about the life rights and acquiring those life rights, thats a, those are really good facts for the prosecution, right? Because looking at that, that was all about the life rights where that was part of, we, she can't tell her story. If we have the life rights, she can't disclose her story to anybody else. And if you remember, Michael Cohen had said, well, we want to assign this over to us because if something happens to David Pecker, we want to make sure that we get those and she can't tell her story anywhere else. And then Pecker, after doing some consultations with other lawyers, said, no, we're going to rip that up. We're not going to assign it. But that was important to Trump. And so that piece of it, the fact that this was all more of a disguise and really it wasn't about her writing columns. It it wasn't about her magazine covers. It was about making sure they could kill this story. The fact that the jury is focused on that, that's great, I think, for the state. The two of the four things that they've asked for involve Trump directly. I mean, one on a phone call with just with Trump and Packer, Cohen nowhere to be seen. And the other, as Harry Littman pointed out in the last hour, has Cohen, Packer, and Trump both in the Trump Tower meeting. Cohen and Packer testified to the exact same thing happening inside that meeting. Why does that matter? Again, it matters because they're both telling the same story. You don't just have one witness that you need to rely on. You you have two people telling you. And we have we didn't hear anything from Donald Trump. So there is no other version of that story. And again, in that meeting, just going back through again before we, we uh, came to the show, looking at it like Pecker is very clear. I was doing this for the campaign. It was positive stories that favored Donald Trump, negative stories about his opponents and he didn't use the words catch and kill. He said eyes and ears of the campaign. If there was anything negative, I was to go to Michael Cohen so that Michael Cohen could buy it and make sure it didn't go anywhere. And that's important because this whole idea that Michael Cohen went rogue on this. Well, there's a meeting where Donald Trump knows that Michael Cohen is going to get these stories. And, you know, that is all with his tacit approval there that he's agreeing with. He's buying into this agreement. So I, I think it's a really important piece of evidence for the state and the fact that they're so focused on it that that's a, the, among the first requests that they've had for testimony, again, seems like a good sign. You know, Yasmin, um, I feel like you're, you're someone who, like, like me, wrestles with our own role in all this. And I feel like when we look back, we may have stumbled to have sort of thrown away the other 21 witnesses and spent so many days talking about Michael Cohen and the one moment in three days of cross that Todd Blanche seemed to sort of have a gotcha nanosecond. I mean, what the jury's asked for are four things unrelated, seemingly, to most of Michael Cohen's testimony, except perhaps what he said about the meeting and if, if it syncs up to what David Pecker said about the meeting. The jury has gone back to the earliest witnesses and they're witnesses that, that Todd Blanche has said zero, zilch, nada about. The first witness, David Pecker, right, opening the entire case for, for the prosecution. And, Nicole, that's exactly what I think the defense wanted, right? The defense wants this jury to focus solely on Michael Cohen's testimony. The defense wants the jury to focus solely on Stormy Daniels. You remember Todd Blanche's closing arguments, right? He spent about two hours 
of those two hours and 45 minutes of his closing arguments on Michael Cohen and Michael Cohen's lack of credibility, chipping away at Michael Cohen's credibility. That was the crux of his entire case, of his entire cross-examination throughout the entire trial, right? Michael Cohen was essentially on trial for these past six weeks alongside the defendant, um, Donald Trump. I, I just want to bring you inside the courtroom for a moment, Nicole, if I can, because they are installed still inside that courtroom, and, and they've been conferring over the pages that are going to be reread to the jury tomorrow morning uh, when court is back in session at 9.30 in the morning. It seems as if they've agreed on the pages for two of the questions that were asked. First, um, regarding um, Karen McDougal, the buying of her life rights. Second, regarding uh, the meeting that David Pecker was in when he got the phone call from Donald Trump when he was in that investor meeting. Um, and Donald Trump asked him, essentially, what he thought about the Karen McDougal situation. The two things it seems as if they still have issues over are the pages uh, in which they agree or do not agree upon when it comes to the Trump Tower meeting, right? And this is really the crux of where the prosecution has said this whole kind of alleged scheme began. Let's take a walk back for a moment, right? If we remember this Trump Tower meeting in 2015, and Christy got into it a little bit there, but important to kind of reiterate, right? This is David Packer, this is Donald Trump, this is Michael Cohen meeting in 2015 where this alleged scheme, according to the prosecution, first began in which they talked about, quote unquote, killing stories of Donald Trump's opponents in the lead up to the 2016 campaign and placing sort of positive stories for the former president as well, in which David Packer also testified to looking out about stories of women or women coming forward. And he testified to the fact that he knew other individuals who had run for public office. And oftentimes in those situations, women came out of the woodwork. And he was the initial person to bring that up. I think the thing that is so significant about this ask from the jury is if you remember, not only from the jury instructions from the judge, but also from the prosecution's closing arguments. When they talked about Michael Cohen's testimony first, the prosecution's closing arguments, they said it's not just about Michael Cohen's testimony. It is about all the evidence that corroborates Michael Cohen's testimony. And then you think about David Pecker, right? So you can imagine the jury sitting in this room saying, now, does David Pecker's testimony corroborate what Michael Cohen's testimony says about this, about this exact meeting in Trump Tower in 2015, right? And then, and then there is the issue of how important this meeting was for setting up really this entire scheme and how the prosecution has alleged this is where it all began. And Donald Trump was there at the very beginning saying, yes, let's do this. Let's move forward. Um, as I look down at my iPad, I am not, by the way, texting my husband about um, taco night tonight, although it is taco <laughs> night. Um, they are still conferring. It's always taco they night are, in my house. They are still conferring <laughs> about <laughs> they are still conferring about those two um, final questions yeah. from from the jury. It seems as if they're coming to some conclusion there, but not quite yet, as the former president is still inside that courtroom, Nicole. Yeah, I mean, and, and just to bring our viewers into what Yasmin is reporting, we're both reading a feed. This is not a transcript, but this, this is what we rely on. These are our, our journalist colleagues in, in the courthouse. To, to Yasmin's reporting, they have agreed on the response to the jury request for Pecker's testimony regarding um, regarding Pecker's the one that they're they're still haggling over is David Pecker's testimony regarding Trump Tower and Yasmin um, even the prosecutor says and this is in quotes this is a tough one why is this one so hard. Why is this one so hard? And I think that's because it is the crux of the prosecution's case, right? This yeah. is, again, as I mentioned, this is where where it all began, right? Pecker was in the room. Michael Cohen was in the room. You think about the credibility of David Pecker. When 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 um, when Judge Juan Mershon was reading the jury instructions, right, he talked about Pecker's testimony. Um, he said Pecker signed this non-prosecution agreement, which we know, with the SDNY um, and the FEC, right? He said take that into consideration when it comes to assessing um, Pecker's credibility. Do not take that into consideration when saying Donald Trump is guilty or not guilty. When he talked about Michael Cohen, he said, take into consideration the fact that he had pled guilty when it comes to assessing his credibility, not into assessing whether Donald Trump is guilty or not guilty. This is where the prosecution alleges this entire scheme in the lead up to the payoff of Karen McDougal, of the doorman, and of Stormy Daniels 
began. That is why I think there is so many questions and they have not yet been able to settle on the pages that will be reread to the jury. And, and they understand how important it is to the jury here because these are the questions they are asking. They, they already deliberated for four and a half hours, Nicole, right? They're taking this break tomorrow morning. They're coming back fresh, 930 in the morning. All of this will be reread to them. And then they'll go back into that deliberation room to talk more about what may come next. Um, one other thing when it comes to those jury instructions, Nicole, because I know one other question was asked about rereading those jury instructions. We don't have finality as to whether or not the judge is going to read all of those jury instructions or a portion of the jury instructions when they resume court at 930 in the morning.